Hi, I'm Sean, and I love music. I love everything about music. I love listening to music. I love playing music. And unfortunately for the postman who needs to deliver all the albums that I buy, I also love collecting music. And welcome to episode two of the albums that made me. Today we're actually talking about an EP, not an album, but it's had such a massive impact on me that I absolutely have to include it in the albums that made me. Um, today we're talking about Silver uh, by Jezu, um, which is absolutely fundamentally one of my favourite pieces of music ever written. Silver is the second EP and third overall release by Jezu, which is the alter ego of shoegaze industrial overlord Justin Broderick, um, and it was released through Hydrahead Records in 2006. Um, I wouldn't actually hear it until a few years later, however. The EP was recorded by Broderick along with bassist Dermot Dalton and drummer Ted Parson, with Broderick recording the vocals, guitars, keyboards and programming himself. Um, Broderick is of course most well known for his first band, the mighty gods of industrial doom slash metal Godflesh. However, with Jezu he brought some of his softer and more left field influences to the fore. Um, whilst I do love Godflesh still, um, as I've aged I've found myself relating more and more to Jezu. Um, the fiery rage of my younger years replaced with the quiet melancholy of adulthood. I am going to put my hands up right now when I say that I think Broderick is an absolute legend and a total beast, and his work in both Godflesh and Jezu have been frequent companions on my road through life. I would have first heard Silver when I was about 25 or 26, um, it had been out for a few years by that point. Um, I had started to fall into quite a steep depression in my mid-twenties. Um, which would progressively get worse into my late 20s. Um, 25 was actually a pretty difficult year um, and it would lead to some difficult times going forward as well. Depression makes you do some horrible self-destructive things. Um, it loses your friends, it loses your opportunities, it, it loses your time. Um, it makes you say and do and act in ways that, that don't necessarily feel like yourself. Um, it's almost like carrying a consistently noisy bag of all your mistakes and all your fears and all your anxieties on your back every day and not being able to put it down. Um, it's with you when you go to bed at night and it's there first thing when you wake up in the morning. It's no joke when I say that my depression had gotten to a level where waking up and functioning day to day had become overwhelmingly difficult. Um, I lost a lot of things during those days, said things and done things that I regret, lost friends and family members, um, lost a a lot of time, um, but I was one of the fortunate ones in that I had an amazing support network of friends and families who were able to shepherd me through those darker days to, to get me to a much more stable footing. Um, and but I, it's not a lie when I say that music was absolutely a shining light during those days and got me through a lot of the darker times, and Silver is absolutely one of those lights. For those not in the know, Justin Broderick formed one of the single most important metal and industrial bands of all time, Godflesh. And Godflesh are not an upbeat or a happy band. They specialise in gravity warping heaviness, genre bending despair, bleak social commentary and smothering rage. So, so far they seem pretty standard for music I was listening to in my early 20s. Godflesh's component parts pulled from a myriad of different musical influences. There was the obvious metal influences such as Sabbath and Napalm Death, but in amongst them as well you had the electronic and industrial style of Throbbing Gristle. And this would smash into the esoteric and tribal rumblings of Killing Joke, uh, both bands seminal godfathers and godmothers of the burgeoning industrial scene themselves. In amongst there there was also the raw dissonance and discomfort of Swans, um, and the band were at the forefront of experimentation with metal and genre such as Jungle and Hip Hop. Indeed, Run DMC were frequently on the lips of the band as one of their major influences. My path to Godflesh was actually pretty logical, which makes a change from how I normally discover new bands. Um, I started with the industrially adjacent Fear Factory, which in turn led to the panic attack given musical form Strapping Young Lad, whose wall of sound atmospherics were a nice jumping off point into the cold, bleak, machine rage of Godflesh. Fast forward to my mid-twenties and I was absolutely approaching my lowest um, and such angry and dystopian music was just putting me into a spiral. Um, whilst music had always been an escape for me and it had always been one of the major pillars of my life, um, a lot of it was now feeding into my already low mindset. Um, it was exacerbating things that, that had happened, so I'd had some terrible decisions in my life, I'd been, had terrible fights, distanced myself from family, lost friends, struggled at work. 
and I fell down a pretty black hole. Um, at this time, I didn't want to listen to bleakness and misery and constant anger. Um, I, I was really hungry for something um, a bit more hopeful. I had heard of Jesu um, due to my dalliances with Godflesh, but uh, magazines had described them as shoegaze and young Sean absolutely avoided anything that wasn't just the heaviest, fastest, most brutal thing you can think of. Um, however, as I progressed into my mid-twenties, um, as I said, wanted to get into something slightly, slightly different. And although um, Jezu are not an upbeat band and Silver isn't an upbeat EP by any stretch of the imagination, it is a strangely hopeful one. Um, Justin Broderick had spoken lots about the melancholy, hopeful juxtaposition of Jezu and reading him talk about that struggle spoke quite intimately to me. I sallied forthwith to Avalanche Records and found the one solitary copy of Silver that they had, uh, purchased it immediately, took it home and started to get lost within it. Genre-wise, I would describe Jezu as a mixture of Godflesh's incredibly heavy, thundering guitar work and programming, with gentle shoegaze-inspired keyboards and orchestration which isn't a million miles from bands like My Bloody Valentine, also coupled with long, hypnotic riffs and song structure akin to the mighty Southern Lord staples Earth, and it's all underpinned by Broderick's gentle, quiet lyrics and vocals. Um, it doesn't sound like it should work on paper, but it does. Oh, how it does. For me, Silver is a, it's, it's music about being sad, about being lost, but coming out of the other end of that. Um, it has a strange twinge of hopefulness that is uniquely Jezu, which I think spans across all of the all of Jezu's records. Um, the songs bristle with major chords and soft plinking keyboards, but it's all underpinned by an overwhelming sense of melancholy and the crushing guitars that Broderick is most well known for. Um, if I had to describe it in a colour, it's, it's a grey record, it's almost like a rainy day. Even the cover art, um, a black and grey picture of a tree overlooking a lake, is, is bafflingly obtuse but also calming and inviting on the same hand. Um, it spoke to me on a level that few records have before. Title track's main keyboard line and monolithic guitars are hypnotic, and Justin's gentle refrain of I don't understand the pain, I just don't feel quite the same, when you hear them walk away, left you here so you can stay, it's, it's heartbreaking but it's, it's not defeated, it's an admittance that people leave and are lost but life goes on afterwards, it's, it's a song about post depression, it's about surviving the hard times, uh, victorious major chords and an eminently hummable keyboard lead follow on with Justin proclaiming Silver's just another gold. This is a song to get utterly lost within. Up next is Star, with its pounding Godflesh-esque drumbeat and twinkling almost indie guitar effects leading the charge, followed by a heavily distorted guitar and bass section. It also features wondrously rhythmic vocals, with Broderick lamenting of If I could just ignore it like you do, it really touched me. I had been told to just get over it and to get back to my old self early on during my depression which hung on me pretty heavily, so to have this feeling put so plainly and straightforwardly was refreshing. The song rises and rises with relentless double kick, gloriously bright keyboards and off-kilter guitar chords and a closing lyric of it won't be so hard, not for you, before a fantastic synthetic string closes out the track. Another stunner. 
Wolves is mournful, almost doom-like in its steady, nodding bass march and broken chord keyboards, partnered with a deep, heavy guitar line that again is both hypnotic and introspective. Lyrically and thematically, this is quite close to Godflesh, Roderick singing about differing beliefs and violence that comes from the small-minded. The repeated refrain of, I'm not saying, really spoke to me then and even speaks to me now, particularly with the state the UK finds itself in right now. The song climbs and climbs and climbs, becoming lusher and louder and heavier, almost like a hymnal. The EP ends with Dead Eyes, which is probably the most unique track on the EP. It's all reversed guitar lines, digital drums and bass, and a talk box synth lead gently lulling you into a soft meditation before a Godzilla-sized riff smothers you in your sleep. It's a fine finisher and one that immediately makes you want to spin the disc again. This album definitely spoke to me, and it still speaks to me on a very, very personal level. Um, it's an album that feels tired of anger, tired of despair and tired of heartache and attempts to craft something beautiful out of what would normally be quite negative emotions. Um, this is exactly how I was feeling back in those days um, and to have someone whom I already admired craft an album to convey that emotion seemingly just for me, it felt, it, it felt wonderful, it felt uplifting and it felt incredibly hopeful. Um, I've listened to it a lot over the last year actually. Uh, when the world seemed bleak and doomed to circle the event horizon of human-led annihilation, uh, when the ceaseless thunder and rhythm of life threatens to overwhelm me, I know that silver is there and it will always be there. Uh, for me, it's still a lifeline um, and it always will be. So if you're feeling tired, if you're feeling overwhelmed, or you're just feeling generally blue, try and give silver a go. It's heavy, yeah, but it's also soft, it's gorgeous, it's uplifting, and most of all, it's brilliant. As ever folks, take care, be safe, watch out for each other. Cheers. <laughs>